What's up guys? So I want to talk about twist weight today. I was trying to go to sleep last night and I just got this random idea in my head. I was thinking is the pure drive plus literally just the same as a regular pure drive, but longer. And I'm going to go out a limb on a limb here. And I think a lot of people would say, yeah, that's all it is. And it's not. And I was thinking that it's probably not because that would just make the swing weight so much higher. And I know that the swing weight isn't that much higher. Like I just remembered that. So I pulled this up here. Look, so this is the racket comparison tool from Tennis Warehouse. And this is great because they actually go out of their way to capture some data that most people just don't even bother with. So here's the swing weight for the pure drive right here. The 2021 pure drive on this row. And uh, is this a column or a row? <laughs> Whatever. We have a 320 for the swing weight here on the pure drive regular length. And it's 324 on the pure drive plus that's kind of a small difference so generally if you extend something every quarter inch that you extend it should add about 10 points of swing weight so in theory if it was just a longer pure drive it would it would be like 340 swing weight not 324 so i figured how would they bring that swing weight down after bringing it up from increasing the length and I figured, you know what I bet they do? I bet most of the weight is taken out of the head. And I bet a lot of that weight is taken out of the sides of the racket. So I've talked before about twist weight and how twist weight correlates to spin. And I was always making the argument that a lower twist weight racket relative to the swing weight of the racket should have more spin potential. And the reason for that being, and this is something that is surprisingly controversial, which really frustrates me because to me, it just signifies that people don't under, it's not even like you have to understand physics. It's just, you, you know, if you understand the world that this should make sense to you, but if you have a racket and it makes contact with a ball, I mean, geez, let me just grab a racket. You know, I have those. <laughs> All right. I grabbed a racket. It's the Yonex, uh, 100 V core, the V core 100 plus. It's a demo racket. I just uh, needed a little something extra. I thought I'd give it a shot. Anyway, my fist will be the ball. And if a racket is coming into contact as it does, kind of at an angle, right? Usually, if you're hitting the ball, you're going to swing at it. And then right here, maybe you'll hit it, right? Should the microphone be the ball? <laughs> I don't think my microphone would like that very much. But yeah, you'll come up and you'll hit the ball like this. And then you'll brush over the ball, right? And if you have a lot of stability and weight here at the three and the nine, which is above and below the ball at the point of contact, the more crooked your racket is and the more you're accelerating forward, the more the weight here is going to try to stabilize over the force that is generated when you contact right here. So the racket is going this way. And you have to remember that the three and the nine are both traveling this direction. They're both traveling along the swing path of your stroke. So if the three and the nine, you can tell in this case, let's say this is the three, well, I guess this would be the three, whatever. The top one is a little further ahead than the back one. But what's gonna happen is that the more weight that you have here, the more this contact point is going to want to stabilize the racket, right? You have to imagine that when you, when you have a force that collides with the ball here, all the weight here and here is going to kind of surround the ball. And there's gonna be a moment here where the racket kind of freezes a little bit and all these forces are gonna clash at the same time. And the more weight you have at the three and nine, the more the racket is gonna to wanna to stabilize, all right? So that's what happens. The more weight you have at three and nine, the more stable the racket is. That's literally what they say. And that's what the effect of it is. And when it comes to a swing path that is more spin friendly, I argue that having more weight on the three and nine is actually not conducive to having more spin. Imagine that you have no weight here and no weight here. What do you think is going to happen when you make contact with an angle like this on the ball? The racket's going to want to flop, right? It's going to want to flop like that because you have no weight here and no weight here, no stability. What does that translate to? It translates to more spin because the racket can, can continue to brush over the ball as you hit through it. So this is one of those things, if you, if you take it too far and you literally have no weight 
or you take it too far and you put a ton of weight at the three and nine, it's going to have effects that are way beyond what I'm saying here. Like you can definitely have too much stability and too much instability. But generally, if you're speaking within like a realistic playable spec racket, having more stability here does definitely trade off some of the spin, but you might enjoy it more on volleys or maybe you're a more flat style player or you'll feel more plow through. But I generally feel like that sensation of plow through has a lot to do with the way that you, that you go through the ball. If you're a more brushy player and you go through the ball like this with a lot of spin and brush, as you go forward, the three and the nine is going to actually fight that for a moment and try to correct your racket like this. You'll feel the racket actually kind of flop back to a more, to a more straight uh, swing path like that. Whereas if you have less here, your racket will kind of continue to just go through the ball like this. But if you hit flat and you have weight at the three and nine, the racket will plow through better. Whereas a slightly off center shot with less weight on the three and nine, the racket's going to want to flop. So I think these sensations of plow through and stability have a lot to do with the way you'd like to hit the ball. And that really is something that you have to consider when you're talking about stability, because what is st stable for one person actually might not be for another. I think when it comes to stuff like volleys, I think that's more universal because I feel like, you know, I feel like people mostly volley kind of the same, but people have super different forehands and backhands than each other. But volleys are kind of just volleys, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't want to oversimplify that too much, but I mean, you guys understand what I'm saying, right? I feel like if somebody thinks that a racket is really stable for volleys, that most people that use that racket will be like, oh yeah, this racket feels good for volleys, but they won't necessarily f agree that it feels good on a forehand and that has to do with how they hit the ball. So anyway, I'm going to circle back to what I was talking about here with the two pure drives. So the swing weight is only four points higher on the pure drive plus, despite it being a whole half inch longer, which in theory should actually bump it up 20 swing points. So what do they do here? This is something I really appreciate about uh, Tennis Warehouse. They go into some data that a lot of people don't. Another interesting thing too is that the Pure Drive is actually a little stiffer than the Pure Drive Plus by two points. Uh, why does it say a difference of three? Oh, in percent. Okay, it's a difference of three percent. Uh, percents are probably better. But here is really interesting. So the twist weight on the Pure Drive is 15.6. On the Pure Drive Plus, it is 14.2. That's a pretty big difference. So that proves to me that the way in which they achieved a low swing weight after extending the length is by taking weight out of the head. And by taking weight out of the head, naturally you end up taking some out of the sides as well, I imagine. So to me, that, that actually expresses that the Pure Drive Plus might be way more of a spin monster than the regular Pure Drive. One, because if you can handle it, and the swing weight is only four points, higher, so I imagine you can, your swing path will actually be a little more extreme because you have more length. Moving your racket like this from the pivot point of your wrist is actually going to have more head movement with a plus racket than it will with a short racket, right? Because I mean, if I grab the racket here, the head's not moving that much, but my wrist is moving the same. If I have the racket out here, look how much my head is moving, but my wrist is moving the same. So if you extend that just even a half inch, it does make a difference. And on top of that, you have a lower twist weight. The racket's going to brush over the ball a little bit easier. Again, that might not be the kind of swing path that you want, but I feel like if you're hitting with a pure drive, you're probably more of a spin heavy player than not. Although not everybody that hits with a pure drive is. I have a, I have a couple guys out there that hit kind of flat, but the pure drive is one of the most popular rackets of all time. I feel like no matter what, you're going to find every kind of play style. Somebody is going to be using a, a pure drive, you know? So that was just interesting. And honestly, it kind of sparks an interest for me to like buy the pure drive again. And I know that I've been a little bit back and forth with things on this racket journey, but it's not, it's not easy. Sometimes I have this response where I just like, okay, I need to get rid of everything and cleanse my palate. And, uh, I think at that time, the last time I was selling all these 1619s off, I did that partly because a lot of the rackets just didn't feel the way I wanted to. And it's because I was using 16 gauge strings and I was using 16 gauge strings because one, I break strings really quickly. And two, that E zone 98 that I was trying so hard to make work, the E zone 98 plus was so ridiculously powerful that I just, I was doing everything I could to bring the power down. And, and one of my last resorts was to go with a higher gauge string to get less power. And I still just felt like I was getting too much power with that E zone. So I ended up kind of, selling off all the rackets by but but that but at that point in my racket journey i feel like my impression was so 
defined by 16 gauge strings across all the rackets. So I've actually gone back a little bit and kind of have given some of these rackets a second chance. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in my racket update video. But I got to say that learning this about the swing weight for the Pure Drive Plus definitely intrigues me again for the Pure Drive. Just to see that the flex is a little bit lower, which is great because it's not necessarily a comfortable racket, and that the twist weight is a little bit lower. That's Those are two really, really important things for me. It's hard to find an extended length racket at all one that's even any good you know and then on top of that one that has like a reasonable swing weight so this is actually probably one of the lowest swing weight extended length rackets that is not a piece of garbage <laughs> that i can think of actually because even the uh, e-zone 98 and the v-core 98 the plus versions of both of those rackets are like 10 points higher than that so yeah that's interesting hmm the selenko blackout is around that territory it actually might be a little bit lower and i have that racket i have that racket and i've gotten to know it pretty well and i think about that racket as sort of being like a more comfortable pure drive but i should really compare the two side to side since that's the closest racket comparison i can think of for the selenko blackout besides the selenko whiteout but yeah anyway i hope you guys have a better understanding of the correlation between twist weight and stability and how that affects spin and maybe some stuff regarding extended length rackets as well. So I just wanted to have that conversation with you guys since I saw that and I, <laughs> I had to look into that before I could sleep. And that was just really interesting to find out how did they extend it without increasing the swing weight to be such that it's actually unplayable for most players. That's how they did it. They reduced the swing weight by taking weight out of the head naturally the twist weight is lower and in my opinion that must mean that it's a more spin friendly racket than the pure drive standard is so very interesting stuff i'll probably have to try that racket again and yeah stay tuned for that video i got a lot of updates coming up i got a bunch of strings to go through i really gotta catch up so to say um i got some tier one strings i got a pile of them and i have a bunch of strings from ytex as well and those are two string companies i really like and appreciate so Big shout out to those guys. If you don't know Tier 1 and you don't know Ytex, I highly recommend checking out some of their strings. But stay tuned and subscribe and check out some of the content I'll be making because I will be bringing my opinion and my experience and possibly some discounts as well for those string companies. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys in a future video. Thank you. I, will, I look forward to making the next one. All right.